thank you for the kind invitation. I'll talk in 10 minutes on new technologies for the treatment of PAD and uh, address the uh, things that are happening outside of the US. Obviously, uh, 10 minutes is not enough to uh, show all the things that are coming up. Uh, so I made a choice and I'll talk about drug-coated balloons, drug eluting stents, lithoplasty and focal implants. In the European Union, we have now 12 DCBs available. The same drug, different doses, different ex excipients, and different technologies. But the problem is that there are only a few with proper clinical data. The ones that we know here in the US as well, the FDA approved, Lutonix and Impact, and then the non-FDA approved, the Paseo Lux from Biotronic that didn't show a, a very good data outcome, and then the Stellarex that has uh, good data. Just to refresh your mind, this is a low-dose paclitaxel balloon with polyethylene glycol as an excipient. It has a low level of particulate loss during tracking, and there is also, just like with the impact uh, balloon, drug resident at 28 days in porcine arterial tissue. 220 patients have been evaluated now. The data is still pending in quite some of this uh, uh, analysis, and this is the second interim analysis that was presented during NCVH uh, two weeks ago uh, by Prakash and uh, by Thomas Zelle in uh, London during Charing Cross. You can see that the freedom from primary safety event, the clinical driven TLR, was very high, high 93.9%, no device related deaths, and one major target limb amputation, a patient that already had a Rutherford class 5 at baseline. Very important also to note that there was a, a one patient with a mortality uh, because of pancreatic cancer at 12 months, but no other deaths were seen. Here you can see the freedom from TLR, 93.9% at 365 days, and the primary patency was 86.5%, also at 365 days. This compares uh, good and is the same actually as the first in human trial that was already published and the impact SFA data. It, it performs a little bit better than the randomized controlled trial using the Levant uh, balloon, but we have to keep in mind that this is not randomized data, it's just a registry. Second thing in the drug looting uh, area that I want to show is the Alluvia from Boston Scientific. It's a dual layer system with a layer that promotes adhesion of the paclitaxel uh, to the stent. That is the active layer and here you can see the difference between the two. A lower uh, total drug dose and also very uh, even distribution of the drug on the balloon. You can also see the drug release over time that is different from the Zilver PTX. It extends beyond the initial days of uh, uh, 60 days of uh, after implantation. And you can see that this will help also prevent probably re at the time uh, where it's most likely to occur. This was demonstrated nicely in the presentations from uh, Stefan muller hulsbeck uh, also during uh, Charing Cross, the Majestic Registry, showing a very good 12-month primary patency of 96.1%. Then there are some challenges in the treatment of the SFA in the popliteal area. We also saw the uh, problems during the live cases this morning, calcification and dissection. Atherectomy might be a solution for the calcification, but we have the risk of disembolization. Increasing the balloon pressure will cause probably a significant uh, barotrauma and restenosis, so we need uh, vessel preparation with focal stress balloon that probably can take out this. The section can be treated with prolonged inflation or stand placement, but there are some alternatives on the market now. These are some slides that I got from Marianne Brotman. Uh, the problem with calcified tissue is that actually the endovascular therapies that we have today fail. The high pressure inflation will create wall stress. This creates a disruption of the internal elastic lamina, and that in itself again creates a restenosis, and then we have a vicious circle, as you can see. Lithoplasty uh, modifies the lesion um, 
by using uh, ultra ultrasound, which is tissue selective. It's hard on hard tissue and soft on soft tissue. It will change the vessel compliance and then it normalizes it. And this will allow an effective lesion expansion with minimal impact to the healthy tissue. This is the data presented by Thomas Zeller during Charing Cross. You can see that there is a good effect on the percentage of stenosis in the vessels and also the acute gain is uh, good. The patency exists six months is only 80%, which is not really exceptional, but I think this holds very much promise when combined with drug-coated balloon uh, therapy. We know that calcification is a major problem for the uptake of drug in those lesions. You can see a typical example, just like in the case that uh, we just saw the life case, popcorn-like lesions after lithoplasty. You can see that just with balloon angioplasty, a very good result can be obtained. Then the second challenge is the dissection. We can treat that with prolonged inflation or stent placement. Pro probably you only need it for a very brief period of time. With the balloons, you get too much acute injury. Uh, there is a risk of occlusion and throm uh, thrombosis. And the same is true for drug-coated balloons. Stenting is a solution, but we have also heard this morning that instant restenosis is a problem that results from chronic inflammation, and we have the problem of stent fractures. So why not just stent where or pl uh, place implants where the dissection actually is present? There are two systems on the market now, the TAG and the vascular system from Intact Vascular and the VascularFlex Multilock from B. Brown. I'll start with the Multilock. It's actually a six French compatible system that is a stent cut into pieces, uh, simply stating it. And you can see here that you can just focally position the stents here. Unfortunately, there are no data with this device yet. The TAC and the vascular system has some data, it comes in two types, the 6 French and the 4 French system. The 6 French has four tags uh, mounted with a length of 6 millimeters, radio peg markers and fixation elements, and it actually has a large range of vessels that you can treat from 2.5 to 6 millimeter. There is a minimal amount of metal, there is a short open cell design with a very low radial force, a very flat force curve. You can treat lesions very focally and only treat the places where you need it. This give you, gives you a lot of control over where to treat. You can maintain normal vessel biomechanics and you can also preserve future treatment options. Histologically, this also has a good outcome. This is from an animal study from Peter Snyder. Here you can see in the top hand uh, part of the uh, panel, the results after placement of the tacket, and the lower part of the panel shows what happens uh, when you place a stent. So you see a huge difference in neo-intimal hyperplasia. The device is also safe. The safety profile technical su success is high. No tech migrations were seen throughout one year. There was a significant improvement in clinical outcome, as you can see here. The change from baseline in the ABI was significant, and also the patency was good at 12 months. One of the lessons learned in these studies was that overlapping tags did worse than non-overlapping tags, and you can see that in the patency rate that are differentiating the non-overlapping and the overlapping. And the same is true for the target lesion revascularization. The outcome of 12 months is actually better as compared to what we know from the PTA control arms in the various uh, randomized trials, the drug-coated balloon trials, but also the stent trials. And here you can see that actually in this study there were a lot of grade C or worse dissections, and this seems to work good in these cases. So again here, what will the tag add to DCB patency? This is what we learned from the uh, studies. The severity of the sections is frequently underestimated. There is a positive clinical outcome, and this might lead to a new paradigm, managing the sections with minimal metal, minimal outward force, and minimal injury to the vessel. And this holds just like the shockwave balloon, similar promise for C uh, DCBs. In conclusion, several devices are coming on the market that address issues seen with POBA and DCB angioplasty, namely calcification in dissection, and I think that the last new generation DCBs in DES hold great promise. Thank you very much.